Hey everyone, welcome back. This is Dan from DHTV and today I have some iPhone tips and tricks that you can use with your iPhone 15, 15 Pro, 15 Pro Max, and 15 Plus. Let's get started. So for today's iPhone tips and tricks video, we're using the iPhone 15 Pro, but you can use even older iPhones as long as they have the latest version of iOS. And a lot of these tips will be very useful for you as well. We're gonna kick things off with the first iPhone tip here, and that is the new action button. And this tip here is exclusive to iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max models. If you have an older iPhone or even an iPhone 15, the standard model, unfortunately, you'll still have the silent switch, so you won't be able to use the action button. But for those of you who do have the Pro models, the action button works like this. You just press and hold. It'll perform an action. And in this case, right out of the box, it's just silencing my iPhone. And we can customize this in the settings application. Simply scroll down to action button. And here's where we'll be able to see all the actions that we can have the new action button perform. So there's silent, focus, camera, flashlight, voice memos, magnifier, shortcuts, accessibility, and then a no action button. So just select one, for example, the camera, press and hold on the action button, and it'll now perform that action. Choose the one you like best, but honestly, I was hoping that there would have been multiple options that we could have used for this action button, like a double click to perform another action. What do you guys think of the action button? Let me know in the comments. The next iPhone tip we're gonna be looking at is the standby mode that was introduced with iOS 17. And if you have an iPhone that's plugged up to a charger, either via a wireless charger like this one here, and I get asked about this one a lot, it charges iPhone, Apple Watch, and the AirPods. If you want to pick it up, the links to this in the description. But if you have your iPhone plugged up to either a wireless charger or even a wired charger, and you put the phone on the charger like so, or plug it up, it's going to automatically enter this standby mode. And this is a very cool feature. It's interactive. So you can see it's using different widgets to show you different things. You can also switch this side here and see what's going on with those. We've got reminders set up here. You can tap and hold on them enter in your passcode or use face ID, modify, change, add other widgets to it as well. Very, very interactive. You can even swipe this way and see photos, swipe again and even have a different sort of standby face here that you can interact with and customize. I have a full video on how to set this up and use all the features within it. Now to exit, all you do is just turn the phone vertically or pull it off the charger. It'll bring you back to your lock screen here. We're gonna enter back into our iPhone and take a look at those standby settings. So for this, just simply scroll down and you'll see standby. You can tap there and then set standby to turn on. If you don't like the standby option for whatever reason, you can turn it off completely. Turn off the always on display. Night mode options are right here. Motion to wake is on. So if it detects motion at night, it'll turn on. All of these options here you can customize for yourself, including the notifications. And that way you have a fully customized standby mode. The next feature we're going to look at is this dynamic island. And this was introduced with iPhone 14 Pros, but now the iPhone 15 has it and the 15 Pro models. And it works very easily. Anytime you're performing a task or you get a phone call or anything like that, Dynamic Island will kick in. And I'll show you quickly here. We'll just open up, let's say, our clock app here. We'll set a timer for, let's say, an hour and 20 minutes. And now if we just exit, you'll see Dynamic Island instantly kicks in. Now, whenever you have something in Dynamic Island, you'll see it expands that pill sort of icon. You can tap and hold on it, which will allow you to interact with that specific app in the dynamic island so we can pause our timer we can tap to exit our timer and each app depending on what it does will have other options for you you can also work with multiple applications so if we open that music app again start playing it you'll see dynamic island kicks in but at the same time let's just make that timer once again and we'll start it and now that you'll see we have two things going on in Dynamic Island right there. We can tap on them to open each one. And as you open that app, you'll notice Dynamic Island still there with the other app playing. We can tap on the other one and switch over. While we're in the other app, we can still tap and hold on the one that's there so we can still interact with our timer without interrupting what we're doing on screen here. A little bit gimmicky. I was excited about it when it first came out. 
over time. I don't really notice it that much, but it is a cool feature. Let me know what you think of it in the comments below. For the next iPhone tip, we're going to open our messages app and we're going to take a look at stickers. Now, if you've never used them before, you can tap the plus right here and it's going to have a sticker tab here where we can open it up. It'll show us some stickers that we may have already created or have. You can also see emojis, memojis, and so on. But the fun part is using your own created stickers. So, for example, I created this test sticker right here. You just tap on it tap send and you can see I'm just giving the thumbs up there which you guys should do to this video if you like it but you can see it is a live photo I created and it makes that action you can also do standstill stickers so just for example this one where I'm just looking down and you can create these stickers really easily just by tapping the plus here it'll open up your photo application you can choose a sticker or choose a live photo that you have and then add it as a sticker just like that you can add effects to it. However, if you add effects to a live photo, it won't be live anymore, at least from what I've been testing. And we can send the sticker just like that as well. So your creativity is really going to come into play with stickers here. But like I said, there are effects you can add. So you can see this one moves, but if we add an effect to it, so you tap and kind of just hold on it for a second, add effects, you have all these different effects you can choose from. But as soon as you tap one of the effects, you see you lose that whole live photo, which is unfortunate because it would have been better if they had the live photo ability there. But that is stickers with iMessage and your iPhone. For the next iPhone tip, we're going to open the Photos app again. And this time around, we're going to pull the background out of our photos. So for this example, let's just tap on this photo here. And if you tap and hold for a second and then stop, you'll see it. you kind of get that effect where it's highlighting around a border of whatever is prominent in the photo we can actually take that tap and hold and then just drag it out like this and while we're doing this we're going to take our other finger go back to photos and then release now if we tap there you can see the background is gone so if you're a reseller online these apps that do this are pretty expensive so you might want to just look into using your standard photo app for your reselling business to get those nice white backgrounds. But even if you're not a reseller, that is a very powerful tool just to remove the background from some of your photos. Moving back to messages for this next iPhone tip. Let's say you send a message to someone and you make a mistake. When you send it, you'll see it changed from what I said to this word heroic. But let's say I was just saying, hi, I can tap on this. Within 15 minutes, I believe, I'm not 100% on how long you have, but you can actually edit the message as long as you don't take too long. And we can change it to hey and then tap the check mark. Now it'll send. It does say it's edited, but they won't be able to see what you edited on that. They do need to have iOS 16 or newer for the edit to work. Otherwise, you'll edit it on your side. They'll still see the original message. Additionally, if you don't wait too long when you send your message, whatever it is, you can delete the message at the same time. So tap and hold on that message and you can undo send and it's going to unsend that message from the person. And that way, if you make a mistake, you can correct it again. You don't have a lot of time with these. I think it was 15 minutes. It might be even less. But that's how you unsend and edit messages with your iPhone. For this next iPhone tip, we're going to look at what's called name drop. And it ties in with airdrop on the iPhones. Basically, you just bring two iPhones close together while you're on your home screen here. And it's going to just start to do something on its own. You can see right here, boom, it's trying to share each other's contact with the other device. So it's like giving your number and handing them your phone to put in their digits. But this time you can just tap the phones together. Usually it's done like this. You kind of just tap like this and it kind of just pops into each other. And you'll see that you'll have a really nice contact poster. I don't have them set up yet on this phone, but you can set up really nice, unique contact posters with your face, nice pictures, your name and a cool background. But that's how you can share your name and information with the contact. They can choose to receive it, not now. And you can do the same on your phone. Tying in with that a little bit is the contact card. So because I tapped mine together, you saw it was just that basic banner. If you want to create a unique contact card so it looks more customized and fancy, you can open your phone application here and you're going to go to contacts. In contacts, you're going to see your contact card at the top. And if you tap on it, you can set up your contact poster. So you tap edit here 
and you can enter in all your information, tap edit again, and this is where you can customize that contact poster. If you tap customize contact poster, you can choose from your photos, you can take a photo, you can even use Memojis here and create a very unique sort of contact card. So let's just tap this one here and choose one of the options that we have. So let's just say we're gonna use that one there tap next it'll add that right to your page you can tap on the colors here but I'm not gonna get into everything here you can change the font you can change a whole bunch more tap done and continue continue and you'll see the contact card now is created now this is very basic if you want to see some more advanced and more well brought together contact cards I have a video right here showing you how to use them create them and all that. But that way, when you tap your phones together, you'll see that full page. Also, if people call you or you call them, they'll see your card and you can see theirs. Now for this next iPhone tip, it's exclusive to iPhone 15 and 15 Pro, and it's called what I'm going to call it anyway, charge the other phone or save your friend when they don't have battery. But basically, because these phones have USB-C, you can actually charge another phone by plugging one end of the USB-C cable to one phone and the other end to the other phone. And you're going to see that this phone starts charging. So you can see this one right here is at 91, this one's at 47, and this iPhone 15 Pro is now going to charge the other one. However, if you have an iPhone that has a lightning cable, you can still charge that lightning cable iPhone using the USB cable. So it'll use the USB on one side and lightning on the other. The USB side will charge the lightning iPhone. It's a cool feature. I believe Androids already could do this. And I think you can charge between Android phones, but it doesn't work the same way. So it's not necessarily going to say which phone has the lower battery is going to charge. So you may have to like constantly remove the USB, put it back in until it figures out which phone actually needs the charge. So that is it. Those were some iPhone tips and tricks you can use with your iPhone 15, iPhone 15 Pro, Pro Max, even older iPhones. I hope you enjoyed them. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Also, let me know what your favorite tip is with the new iPhones or with the iPhone you have right now. Leave it in the comment. I'm always looking for new things to try out with the iPhone. As always, the full playlist to the tips, tricks, and tutorial series for the iPhone 15s is already up in the description. So if you're looking to learn more, definitely check it out. There's tons of iPhone videos, Apple Watch videos coming up on the channel. Hit that like button, subscribe, and click the bell notification box so you're notified when I post a new video. Try to get the first comment, and I will see you in the next one.